In this presentation, we will calculate sales tax in our practice problem. Here we go now with zero now. Here we are in our triple G dashboard. We're going to start off opening up our financial statements. So I'm going to open up the accounting uh, tab up top. We're going to go on down to that balance sheet. Once that balance sheet then opens, we'll go up to the tab up top, right click on it and duplicate the balance sheet. Going back to the tab to the left, we're going to do the same thing for the income statement, selecting the accounting drop down, going down to the income statement. Once the income statement then opens up, we're going to do the same thing to it. Going up to the tab up top, right clicking on that tab, duplicating that tab. Back to the balance sheet, going to go to the first tab to the balance sheet and change the date. The date's going to be on this drop down right here. We're going to be selecting and going up to March. We're going to bring this on up to March, going to update this tab. Then I want to take a look at the income statement back on over to the income statement. Now just uh, this looks good. So we're going to go down. Now note that we entered all of the income items here. If we have sales tax on that, you might think, well, how would I fit sales tax into this? If you don't have a company that has sales tax and then, then the cash basis system works, no problem. But what if you have sales tax? How could you make that work and still work kind of like this cash basis system where you're basically dependent on the bank? To think about that, let's go back to the first tab and consider that actual invoice. Let's look at an invoice and what the calculation of the sales tax is on it. Normally, if I hit the plus button and I say plus, and I was to uh, create an invoice, we're not going to actually record this. We're just going to be a mock invoice. Say we're selling something subject to sales tax. I'm going to say this is going to be one item, $500, uh, $500 subject to, not $5, $500 subject to sales tax. So we're going to have the tax rate on it at the 9.5 percent so that's what that's what the calculation would be we'd have to charge 547.50 so basically what we we would want to think of then doing is saying hey look i'm going to charge everybody that we have every the, the amount the amount of the sales plus the sales tax i'll just work that into the price basically that we're going to sell it for and then we'll back out the sales tax so in other words every time you make a sale you're going to assume it's being sold including the sales tax and then back it out uh, so you can do that. Obviously, you want to do that consciously and be able to set your price and then include the sales tax. But even if you didn't do it consciously and you just sold whatever, and then you've got to back, back out the sales tax for whatever reason, because you know the government's saying pay a sales tax or we're going to do something bad to you or something. Right? So then we got to back out the sales tax. So how would that work if, if we think about this in Excel, then you're going to think, well, that's, you know, it might be a little bit more complicated than you might think. I'm going to open up Excel and say that we're going to format the cells here and let's make it i like to make it currency brackets and then no dollar sign i'll keep the decimals so i'm just going to format this i'm going to make this a little bit larger and so what we're what we're saying here is is typically on the invoice we said sales uh was 500 dollars, 500 and then the tax rate was 0.095 or 9.5 percent if i make that a percent I'm going to go to the home tab number, make it a percent, and then I'm going to add a decimal. So it's 9.5%. And then that means that, uh, that the, the tax on it or the tax would be equal to this times this. So that's the tax. I'm going to underline this. And that means the sales and tax that we actually charge is going to be this plus this, right? That's going to be the actual amount that we charge so so now if we like kind of reverse this calculation we can think okay well what if i already have this number and i need to back into the sales number if i don't know what it is because i if i know that then i can apply the same kind of method to uh to the entire amount so i can i can then go back over uh, to our system and think about uh think about the entire amount if I go to the income statement of sales and say, well, that whole amount, you know, included the sales tax, how can I back out basically the tax portion of it? Well, we can think about mirroring the same kind of transaction over here. And I could say, okay, well, what if I did the same transaction? I'm just going to copy this and I keep the formula. I'm going I'm to use a little tool within Excel to kind of help us out with this. In other words, I've got the same transaction. I'm going to calculate it this way, which is the easy way to know it. And then the unknown here, I know I know this number down below. I don't really know this number. This is the number I need to get to. But notice I have the same formula down here. So I have the same formula. 
And then I'm going to use this goal seek just to show you how you might do this in Excel. You could obviously use algebra to, to, to f figure out the unknown, right? But I just want to show you this little tool within, within Excel that might make it easier to, to think about as well. So if I go back up top and say, all right, let's, let's use this little tool. We're going to go to the data tab up top. We're going to go to the, uh, to the forecast information. Notice I'm not on any cell because so this isn't going to be a formula in the cell. It's just a tool we're using. I'm going to set the what if drop down. I'm going to use this thing called goal seek. And this gives us a little thing where we could just say, hey, Excel, I want you to just do whatever you have to do to make this number equal to what I know it should be by changing this number, which is connected to this number with a formula. So we're basically going to say, hey, Excel, would you please set this cell? to be some hard coded number, what I know it should be, which I know it is, it's gonna be this 547.5. I'd like you to do that by changing this cell. And this cell is connected to that cell with a formula. So, right, so we're gonna say, hey, Excel, please change this cell to that hard coded number by just trial and error, putting whatever you need to in that cell. So then I'm gonna say, okay. And then it figures it out, right? So that's, we can kind of back into it that way. And if you apply that same method then to all your sales, so in other words, if you if you consider all your sales, including sales tax, and therefore at this point in time, you have sales of the 21,630, and you're trying to determine this is as of the end of, let's say, March, and I'm trying to give my sales tax calculation that I have to pay, meaning I have to back out the sales tax component of this, which I can then, I have to pay, you know, to the state. How would that look? Well, we can go back over here and do the same thing. I can say I could say that the same kind of calculation, but but this is this is the unknown, and the and what I what I know that this bottom number should be is going to be equal to uh, what is in the the sales, which should be twenty one six thirty. So I know that should be twenty one six thirty. So I'm going to say two one six three zero is what I know this bottom number should be. So I'll do the same goal seek thing. I'm gonna go, all right, data tab, forecast, goal seek, goal seek. I'm gonna say, hey, Excel, would you please set this number to be equivalent to what I know it should be because this is what's on my statement, 21,630, by changing whatever is in this cell. Make that cell whatever you need to be, right? And then I can say, okay, calculate that. And there we have it. Right. So, so in that way, you can kind of back into it. You can, again, you can use algebra obviously to do this, but that's one way you can use goal seek to back in. And then you could double check going, going this way, right? Like if I had this calculation and I, then I plug in the bottom line number, that means that I must have had uh, the 21,600 uh, and I, I must have had the 19,75342 right the 19753.42 times the 19% would be the sales tax therefore of the 21629 if i'm assuming the sales tax was included in it then 187657 uh, about you know it's rounded would have to be the amount that's going to apply be applied to uh, the sales tax and then when and then you can pay the sales tax so when you pay the sales tax then you could pay the sales tax electronically or however uh, you want to pay it. And when you pay it, what's going to happen is you're, you're gonna, your cash will go down, which you'll see on the bank feeds, right? Cash will go down. And then the other side, you're going to actually put to the, to the sales line. The sales line is overstated, right? It's overstated by the amount of sales tax, which, which you know, normally would have gone through a payable account. It normally would have gone through a payable account. But here, you're on a cash basis. You didn't go through a payable account. So you would just post it here and you, or you might want to create a contra income account called sales tax, uh, sales tax, right? And then that would be a negating this, this sales. Cause typically you don't record the sales here. It would go to a payable and then you, then you'd pay it. But in this system, you can just decrease the, the sales backing it out when you pay the sales tax. So then you could figure out the sales tax saying that you imputed it into the sales, you calculated it, and then you're going to back it out. So that's one method you may, you know, consider if, if again, you want a very simple kind of cash basis method within something like zero, where you're completely on, on a cash basis and dependent on the bank feeds, but you still have to deal with uh, the sales tax calculation. So that's it for now. Let's get out of here.